Good morning, everyone. The Lord be with you, and also with you. As we begin our worship, as we light our first candle, we remember God the Father, who helps us to love worship. As we light the second candle, we remember God the Son, who helps us to love one another. And as we light the third candle, we remember God the Holy Spirit, who helps us to love ourselves. For our song today, we're going to sing or listen to or join in with the actions to the song Wonderful Lord, Wonderful God. It is a song that talks about being safe with God, particularly when we go to sleep at night. Rev Dave is going to lead us in the song, but this is how some of the actions go if you want to join in. It goes like this. Wonderful Lord, wonderful God, you are my shield, my protector. I can lie down, go off to sleep, knowing you're watching over me. Wonderful Lord, wonderful God, help me to trust you forever. I need not fear, because you are near. I can lie down and sleep in peace. That's how the song goes. Hope you can join in maybe with some of those actions as Rev Dave leads us today. Wonderful Lord, wonderful God, you are my shield, my protector. I can lie down, go off to sleep, knowing you're watching over me. Wonderful Lord, wonderful God, help me to trust you forever. I need not fear, cause you are near, I can lie down and sleep. Wonderful Lord, wonderful God, you are my shield, my protector. I can lie down, go off to sleep, knowing you're watching over me. Wonderful Lord, wonderful God, help me to trust you forever. I need not fear, cause you are near, I can lie down and sleep.
Does anybody know what day it was yesterday? It wasn't just Wednesday, it was a special day yesterday. It was Remembrance Day, and last Sunday was Remembrance Sunday. We all kept two minutes silence yesterday, and some of us kept two minutes silence on Sunday as well. To remember all those who have died as a result of war, particularly those soldiers who died during the First and Second World Wars. I have a story for us today that I told as part of our church's Remembrance Sunday service from our local area. We're now in the year 2020. I wonder if any of you know in what years the Second World War happened. Perhaps you can put your hands up if you think you know. Okay, the answer was 1939 to 1945. Keep your hands up if you were right. Well done if you were right. Can you now put your hands up if you know who Britain and her allies were fighting in the Second World War? Well, the country we were fighting against was called Germany, but the government of Germany at that time was called the Nazi Party, and their leader was the man in the picture here, Adolf Hitler. So well done if you knew any of those answers. The countries that were fighting against Adolf Hitler in Europe eventually won the war in 1945 when Germany surrendered. And that's when my story today begins. When you are fighting a war and soldiers from the other side surrender, that means they lay down their weapons because they know they've got no chance, they are called prisoners of war. You take any soldiers who surrender to you from the other side and you keep them as a prisoner until the war is over. You are not allowed to harm them, but you will need to keep them guarded so that they don't try and start fighting you again or try and go back to rejoin their army. At the end of the Second World War, some German prisoners of war were kept on the Welbeck estate land, which is a lot of the land between Cookney and Worksop. The first question that I would like you to discuss with each other today is, if your country was fighting a war, and you saw some prisoners of war from the other army who had been fighting against you, being guarded near your home, how would you react towards them? Here's some music while you discuss the question with one another. I wonder what kind of answers you came up with. 
How would you react if you saw prisoners of war from an enemy army being guarded near your home? I wonder if any of you were honest enough to say that you would be unkind to them. That would seem to be quite a natural response. These soldiers have been your enemies. They have been fighting against, trying to kill people from your country. You might know people who have died in the fighting. You might want to try and fight them yourself. Throw things at them. Call them names because they had been fighting against your side. This is a really natural reaction, and I wonder if any of you were honest enough to say that that's what you would do. But then I also wonder if any of you said that you would actually treat enemy soldiers with kindness if you saw them being guarded near your home. And if so, I wonder why you maybe said that. Actually, Jesus, in the Christian holy book, the Bible, said that even though it's really difficult, we should try to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. I wonder why Jesus said that. Well, maybe it's because if we do what's often the easier thing and keep fighting and are nasty to those who have been nasty towards us, then we are likely to remain enemies with that person. Whereas if we do the harder thing and show kindness towards them, there's a chance that they will stop fighting us and start liking us, even becoming our friends. And so the fighting may stop. So as I was saying earlier, German prisoners of war at the end of the Second World War were being guarded close to where we live here today on the Welbeck estate. I wonder what you think happened. Did the people who lived here in Worksop and in Cookney 70 years ago, maybe even some of your grandparents and great-grandparents, treat the prisoners of war kindly or treat them harshly? Well, actually, there are many stories of the people from our area treating German prisoners kindly. Some treated them so kindly that some of the prisoners even wanted to come back and visit the Welbeck estate many years after they had returned home to Germany. And when they visited, they told stories they remembered about how they had been allowed to visit the houses of local people and share a meal with them. Some of them even visited people on Christmas Day and received presents from them. While they were being guarded on the Welbeck estate, instead of just sitting around, these prisoners were allowed to read books and sit exams, so that when they returned to Germany, they would be able to be school teachers and church ministers. The prisoners would meet every day in their camp to pray and read a story from the Bible together, just like we do in our times of worship in school. And this encouraged them to return to Germany and try and help the people there to live in peace, as Jesus taught us all to live in peace rather than fighting, as Adolf Hitler had led that country to do. Some of the prisoners, when they came back, even said that the kindness they had received from people who lived here helped them to follow Jesus 
in their lives and go back to Germany and work for peace. When I first heard this story, I thought it was so amazing how the people who lived here where we live today had acted so kindly towards the prisoners that they helped create peace between our two countries when before they had been war. We are lucky that no other country has tried to invade our country while we have been alive. But we do know that in our country and in the world as a whole, a lot of people argue with one another and that there is still war and fighting going on in other parts of the world. So as we finish our worship today, let's think of those ways in which we can be kind to those around us. Even kind to someone who is nasty to us. When someone is nasty to us, we may well need to tell someone about it. Maybe an adult who we trust if it's making us feel really bad. But if we can, we should try not to fight back or try to make them feel bad as well. Let's think about that for a minute while this music plays. say a prayer. Lord God, we thank you so much that you sent Jesus to show us how to live our lives and to forgive us when we mess it up. Lord God, we thank you that Jesus showed us how to live in peace by trying to love our enemies. Lord God, we thank you for the people who lived where we live 70 years ago, who were so kind to the German prisoners of war that were here, helping to make peace between our countries. Lord God, help us to live peacefully with everyone around us. In your name we pray. Thank you for listening so well this morning. Let's finish our worship by saying together the words of the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that Jesus taught his friends to say. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I hope you have enjoyed our worship today and hopefully we can see each other again soon. 
let's finish by saying these words. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.